Hey, what's up? This is Agathian here. Mainstream fashion culture is pretty heavily weighted towards global or multinational brands. After all, they're the ones with the marketing budget to make sure you've heard of them and that you know what wearing that brand represents. This inertia encourages content creators and fashion MFs alike to focus on those kinds of brands at the expense of others. After all, you'd be mad not to try and capitalize on the huge volume of search traffic for Nike sneakers, for example. Not to mention there's a certain amount of clout associated with wearing the hottest or the most visible items of clothing in the moment. I'm not here to bash on clothing which comes with that kind of recognition or social validation. After all, I wear plenty of very well-known brands as well. Instead, I want to spend some time shedding some light on the opposite side of things. The unknown, the new the fresh. I think applied in the right way, independent or unknown brands can help us express ourselves in a more personal way. They give us access to different types of creativity and they allow us to explore aesthetics which multinationals maybe aren't doing. Oh, and if you're gonna spend your taxed income on fun clothes, there's something that a little bit more satisfying about sending it to a person rather than a faceless and potentially evil mega corporation. We unearthed this topic at the end of last year and now it's time to dive back a little bit deeper into the world of undiscovered clothing. The goal of this video is both to share some cool brands that I've been enjoying recently and discuss why I find them valuable. I'm really hoping my line of thinking will help you hone in on what sorts of things you value or really appreciate from clothing, and that will help you find those characteristics in new brands. That might be technical innovation, that might be handcrafted items made specifically for you, or it might just be a cool aesthetic from somebody with a good idea. Sneakers have traditionally been one of the hardest things for single creators to do. The different types of materials involved, the assembly process, the ergonomic side of things to consider means even making samples is pretty difficult, time consuming and expensive. There is a reason why most startup brands go with graphic tees as their first products. That's partly why I find a live form so interesting. They're a startup sneaker brand conceptualized by one man in Japan, Ping aka Com Conception, and they have already come out with several models. First coming out of the gate with the Monstera Stomper and now there's a bunch of different Armis models. I've got the Armis Low Plus chilling in the back here. An ultra futuristic and oversized slip-on inspired by organic shapes. As you can probably tell, a live form uses tech to make this happen. These are, of course, 3D printed using multiple densities and lattices of a single material. I think it's really cool how this kind of technology has helped to democratize the sneaker space so individuals with really cool ideas can bring their vision into reality in a way not possible through traditional means. The result is something which, in my opinion, looks awesome. There's common ground with the curved shapes of the Yeezy foam runners or the Polex Crocs, but a life form attempt something far more complex here, turning these from a work of nature into a work of science fiction. I was surprised at some aspects of this shoe. They are pretty comfy underfoot. They're super easy to get on as well. Those multiple densities genuinely put in work and are a mark of real consideration. However, these are my true to size on the website. They do suggest going down a size. I would definitely second that recommendation. These are pretty roomy. Even with that aside, they're not the easiest things in the world to walk in. The curved outsole really does take some getting used to, so they are not particularly stable underfoot. I definitely would not want to be using these for running around or doing anything too strenuous. In that sense, they definitely feel like an experimental product, something that's more about the unique design and being able to show these off than it is actually wearing them all day, every day. So with that in mind, I'd be very interested to see a more wearable version of this design. Something that does put day-to-day -day wearability first, even if it makes for a more traditional looking shoe. I think the Aliform story is a really cool one though. No doubt this is a shoe that will get people talking. And if you've got the wardrobe to support it, something that has a massively unique appeal. Not to mention a fantastic display piece, a little bit like a more technical big red boot in that respect. Massive thanks to a life form for sending these ones out. Maybe I'll pick up another pair in a smaller size as there's just nowhere else you can get a design like this. If we're thinking about cool stories though, we have to talk about not in list. If you're familiar with Hamkus and the extensive lore they've created behind their clothing, not in list creator Xavier from Malaysia is doing a similar thing. He imagines a world destroyed by a cybernetic virus where warring factions and mercenaries fight over Earth's remains, and all the brand's clothing is designed with that world in mind. 
Even the more basic pieces like the Aero T uses these contrast material back panels designed to ventilate heat from mech unit pilots. Sold on a darkly futuristic site with a lore page which could have been assembled by a conspiracy theorist. And you'll find with every product a collectible card expanding on the not in list universe. There's no doubt you're buying into a creative project, not just a piece of clothing. And that's something you wouldn't really find from mainstream brands aside from in the most conceptual or unusual collaboration. More substantial items like the ZK2 down jacket behind me is a great example of what this brand is about right now. The cropped shape and the width looks great, it is as warm as it looks, and it uses a backpack style sling in case it gets a bit toasty, an unusual addition outside the typical tech wear clothing space. I also have to mention this really cool and surprisingly simple inclusion of these little snap buttons in the corners, trading the front zip for an extra geometric edge. I think this looks great and combined with the wings on the collarbone creates a super dramatic looking jacket. I can't praise the look of this thing enough. I think it's so common for cyberpunk and futuristic jackets to have a very derivative look about them as if they've all taken inspiration from the same place. But this clearly has its own personality like Xavier has taken a different approach. Yet it's still a decently built and useful bit of clothing. Okay, you're not gonna take it out on the mountains instead of a thorium or something, but it's plenty good enough for regular wear. I saw Fashion Lover 4 covered not in list recently as well. It's great to see this brand getting attention elsewhere and I definitely recommend that video. Not many brands engage in the level of world building that not in list. Does. He mentioned an important point, the lore, the fun shiny cards, they are a form of marketing in that they make the product more appealing to us, but they also give this crucial context to why things look the way they do. Giving us the context to these kinds of designs allows us to get more value from the aesthetics they present. This sort of brand worldview is more interesting than no worldview, after all, and the fact that it is all dreamt up by one person and has the charm of imperfection about it, rather than something focused, grouped, and created by a huge team of executives it makes me feel a lot more positive about associating myself with it. This is clearly along tech wear or cyberpunk lines. If you like that idea but want something a bit easier to wear, you could check out something like Ghost Hardware, primarily focusing on tees and hoodies, but the graphics are... Well, they're pretty intense. It feels like there is basically an entire story behind every single graphic that they're presenting here. There's just a lot to look at and to process. You'll notice certain themes running through multiple garments as well. So it feels like there's some clothing which has a little bit of a message or something that's worth deciphering behind it. A little bit like Not In List in that sense, um, which again is something that separates it from so many of those other cyberpunk aesthetic kind of brands. I'm sure everyone is sick of stuff with nonsense cyberpunk logo logos attached to it by now. A potential advantage of shopping these kinds of brands is a more personal relationship with your clothing. The idea that something was made for you rather than one of a thousand sitting in an enormous warehouse. Based in Germany, Skinosh is an accessories brand where every product is made to order and hand sewn by brand owner David Masir. The result is raw, it's artisanal, it's avant-garde. He made me this holster bag to check out and you can instantly see the time and the craftsmanship that went into this. The stitching here, for example, you just wouldn't see on a mass-produced product, and the textural quality of this Tuscan horse leather truly makes the piece unique, and that's something that will only become more personal to you as it ages and patinas over time. I also think this brand is a perfect reflection of the brand owner himself. David regularly makes content on YouTube and Instagram showing off the clothing he likes, and there is a real connection between that stuff and what he's making, so you can really tell that this brand is born from genuine enthusiasm. It's hard to get more authentic than that. You are buying into the personal taste of one person making a product with his own two hands. Clearly they aren't trend-driven items either, so if they fit your style, it's the kind of thing you could conceivably wear for a long time. It's absolutely going to suit people who are into brands like Rick Owens, Boris Badan, Saberi, The Viridian, Julius Devoa, but I see a connection with more technically minded people as well. Lots of metal details like this XL zip as well, use of military hardware, so there's some crossover with those technical brands there. So while it's clearly specialist clothing, I think there's a little flexibility in how this kind of thing could be integrated in different outfits. They'll even do customized orders to even further make this not just an accessory that you bought, but your accessory. I think that has a lot of appeal. Although David does make YouTube content, this is definitely not a YouTuber brand. There is clearly a lot more effort put into this stuff, especially because the brand was actually started before the YouTube channel. I also think Owen Hyatt's brand Somar fits into that not just a YouTuber brand category. While they do clothing as well as accessories, 
Professor is, I feel similarly of it really representing Owen's style, giving you an opportunity to get some of that look for yourself. And again, he clearly believes in his own product, judging by how much he's worn the recently released tassel trousers. My brain is so rotten that I saw that picture and thought, wow, that's pretty cool and an interesting idea that they come like that. No, that's just what happens when you actually wear your clothes. Anyway, the brand toes the line well between wearable clothing and stuff which has a personality to it. They're definitely not just a basics brand. I also see some dark humor in that criminal mountain rescue cap, and I always appreciate brands that don't take themselves too seriously. Speaking of which, I could spend a long time talking about Christian's brand Raised Online. That's a whole nother video though, so... Be patient on that one, it is coming. If you were cool enough to watch the last video on this topic, two of the key brands I mentioned were Huni and Amulet Wear, and I've got an update on both of them. I praised Huni for their viral success, really capturing the spirit of playful, authentic feeling Y2K inspired clothing, and the charm of brand owner Mona Thomas sharing as much about herself as her brand, making you feel like you're buying into her personally and not just a faceless corporation. Well, over the last year, Huni's profile has only increased. She's made custom sunglasses for J. Balvin and Lil Nas X, the latter of who was seen wearing a full Hoonie outfit. And plenty of popular online figures have worn her clothing. I even spotted someone in London walking past me wearing one of her hoodies. I also think the brand's trajectory has been good, expanding that core offering a little bit and making the product more available over time without just releasing the same thing over and over. The recent drop of the black and white tonal hoodies is noticeably more sober, slightly edgier, giving the design a slightly different feel to pure Y2K pastiche, thus making it more more aesthetically available to a wider range of people without compromising on that style she's building. While we're here, we might as well compare sizing and color. I bought the white and green one a while ago. Mona was kind enough to send me the new black version. This is a size large and the other one is an XL. So I'm 187 centimeters built like a pool noodle and this is how they fit on me. I originally thought the XL would be good because of my height, but actually the large I think is a little bit closer to the intended fit. That crop really comes across much better but the sleeves still aren't too short. XL is definitely going to be the better bet if you're bulkier than I am though. The green makes a fun statement piece, but I can see the black one being a real wardrobe staple for me over winter. I'm looking forward to seeing how Huni progresses in the coming seasons, because I think there's a lot to explore under this aesthetic as the Hooniverse grows. And then Amulet, a little more workwear, gritty, industrial. They've only experimented more with different pre-faded colorways, documenting the process and showing samples on Instagram so fans see the development of the clothing almost in real time. That goes alongside the iterative nature of their drops, different pocket arrays, fun extra features. One of their releases even took a more streetwear edge, adding some more prominent branding. This brand new V2 carpenter hoodie they sent me has a really cool gray wash to it, giving it an ultra faded, uneven finish, simulating a heavily used garment you can really rely on. The mini zip pockets I think are a fun touch too. Most brands adopting this over pocket design do so by invoking military or tactical or even cyberpunk themes. It leads to a lot of very samey looking products. I am growing pretty tired of all of those things, but by taking a different approach and looking first at workwear, Amulet is coming up with something that has the same kinds of ideas, but executing them in a fundamentally different way. And I think it makes a much fresher looking product and something that I personally think is a lot cooler. Do check the size charts though. I think the dye process may have made this hoodie shrink quite a lot because it fits noticeably differently to my black zip up from before. This one fits okay, but it doesn't have the slouchy oversized look that I think comes across really great with this kind of aesthetic. So hopefully once the final product releases, because this one was a sample, uh, I'll be able to switch it over to a bigger size. We'll still be good under a jacket though, I think. I definitely recommend keeping an eye on sizing as a general tip for shopping independent brands. Everywhere has their own ideas of how their garments should fit and everything comes in different kinds of sizes as well. These, for example, tend to come across a little bit cropped. That is of course the same with the Hooney hoodies. So it's gonna fit different people differently. So know your measurements, compare against things that you like the fit of already, and that's really gonna help you get the garment and the sizing that's right for you. This is the downside of me getting samples and stuff, obviously, where I don't always get to pick the size or I don't get to study the literature, but you can do that stuff. They actually made a shell jacket too, which is a more technical all-weather take on some of the ideas in their other products. And it's cool to see a fully featured shell that you could happily wear regularly. The big feature, literally, is these absolutely enormous pockets concealing a full array in the chest. Super fun party trick, fits in with the Amulet product 
line up perfectly. Also invokes this world of the crazy early 2000s jacket. And again, that is a topic for another video. So I'll get this jacket back out then, talk about that. All this stuff is very lifestyle and streetwear, but even in performance spaces, there are more niche brands doing interesting things. Senshi Designs is one of those. Everything they make is from the same material, Polatech Alpha Direct. It's a high performance fleece using lofted fibers to make a very lightweight garment that will keep you warm, but is also super breathable. It has a very different look to traditional thick fleece as well. I think this material is really good. I've got it in the LA6B and the J89AD. The difference is that these products are about a tenth of the price. Yes, of course, there's a lot more to a piece of clothing than the primary material, but I do think these are pretty nicely priced, especially because these are manufactured in the USA. I also like how they show their clothing being used in all kinds of ways, emphasizing this is clothing designed to be worn and fit into your lifestyle, whether that be intense outdoor activities, doing lighter stuff with friends, or wearing in a more streetwear or lifestyle context. It engages with the reality of this kind of outdoor performance clothing, your gawp core stuff, if you will, that it isn't just for epic extreme mountaineers. And acknowledging that, I think, makes things feel a little bit more authentic to me. These brands all offer opportunities to try out clothing that others aren't making, and experiment with ideas from individuals with different interests and specialities. I'd love to see a fashion world where more people are supporting individual creativity and brands they've discovered or been recommended by a friend. Of course, there are great pieces out there from big brands and established designers, no one's denying that, but keep an open mind for these smaller scale projects. You might just come across something that you vibe with that little bit more than well-established or highly marketed products. Would love to hear of any independent brands you think I missed and are worthy of discussion and recommendation. Would be awesome to make this video even more helpful by giving people some really cool stuff to scroll through and check out in the comments. Let me know if you wanna see a part three and let's help each other discover some cool new stuff. Massive thanks to the brands I covered in in this video, a life form, not enlist, skin ash, hooney, amulet, uh, all of them were able to send out things for this video, so massive thanks to them. I'll be wearing all of them in future content, so keep an eye if you want to see some more stuff from them. That's all from me though, so thanks very much for watching. Please give the video a like if you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you in the next one.